Good afternoon friends and today is a Friday afternoon and I am already set for a nice weekend. Uh, anyways, uh, so today's point of discussion is going to be about biotransformation of the drugs, also called as metabolism of the drugs. Okay? So it's a process of chemical alteration of the drug molecules within the body to make more lipid soluble compounds and to transform them into more water soluble compounds which are polar in nature. Now why you want to make drugs which are more hydrophilic or water loving with a charge on them so that they can get excreted out of the body, excreted out of the body at the same time polar compounds won't get reabsorbed at the time of excretion by the kidney. Okay, so that's the reason that you want to have more water soluble and polar compounds to form from the drug molecules so that the excretion becomes easier. All organs of the body, all organs of the body have the ability to biotransform drugs. We just think of liver because liver is the site where most of the enzymes needed for biotransformation are concentrated. But other organs like for example the intestines, uh, lungs, uh, brain, uh, skin and so on all do have the ability to biotransform drugs. Now some drugs by their nature itself are more water soluble, okay? antibiotics like neomycin and so on. So they don't get biotransformed to a very large extent and usually get excreted out of the body in just the unchanged form. Now once the drug enters into the biotransformation process, there are several possibilities that a drug molecule will undergo. The first of that possibility would be yet, uh, now I have, can you show this, can you show this? I have uh, this, uh, what is called as uh, paperwork done, some craft work. I am not very good at craft, but anyway, I think this is all made up of paper of different colors and um, this is all what I require to explain to you the biotransformation process. Uh, so the first possibility that I need to now discuss with you is that uh, active drug like this, active drug like this, okay, this is active drug molecule, okay, gets transformed into an inactive drug molecule. So active active drug molecule getting itself transformed to an inactive drug molecule which is easy to get excreted out of the body. Okay, so from active drug to inactive molecule examples would be uh, drugs like this like paracetamol or uh, lignocaine and so on which may follow this pathway of active molecule to inactive states getting out of the body. The first possibility. The next possibility is that uh, active Active drug like this, okay, it's kind of a uh, weird shape when you are looking like a drug molecule, isn't it? So, an active drug molecule having an active metabolite. Okay, so, active to active. Examples for this would be transformation of morphine to a metabolite known as morphine 6 glucuronide, which is also an active drug molecule. So, active to active. The third possibility is. You have an inactive drug molecule like this. This is the inactive drug molecule, remember, getting transformed into something which is of the active molecule. So, inactive drug molecule getting into the body and getting transformed into an active molecule. This process is what we then call it as a pro drug. So, this molecule becomes a pro drug, it's an inactive molecule. But once inside the body, getting transformed into an active drug molecule. The best example of this would be a levodopa molecule, getting itself transformed to active dopamine inside the body, used for Parkinsonism, which is a CNS disorder. Okay. Now coming to the fourth way of how, what are the possibilities? Okay. We have. Uh, we have this drug molecule with us. It's looking yellow, cylindrical or not cylindrical, it's uh, spherical, sorry. So, this drug molecule, active drug molecule, 
getting suddenly rearranged, rearranging itself into something like this. So this is a drug molecule which is globular in shape, spherical shape into something like this. So total rearrangement of the drug molecule. This is what we call it as Hoffman's elimination. Examples would be muscle relaxants used in general anesthesia, atraculium, which follow this kind of a sudden rearrangement of molecules. And then this is possibly, uh, you know, it, it's easy to excrete uh, such a kind of a molecule from the body. Okay. So these are all the possibilities that a molecule will face once it is in the biotransformation process. Okay. The next thing is, the exact process in which the biotransformation takes place. Can you show this to them? Okay. So again, we come back to uh, the drug molecules, and here are all my drug molecules. Uh, and then I have a JCB. Can you see this thing? It's a toy JCB. I borrowed it from my son's uh, thing. And anyway, so <laughs> I'll be using it. Uh, for to explain to you uh, something on a uh, process of biotransformation. So in fact, we are playing with the uh, toys in fact, isn't it? Okay, to explain nature. Uh, such a unique thing. Okay, so now we go to the process of drug transformation or drug metabolism. Okay, so the first thing is the drug will enter what we call it as a phase one reaction. A phase one reaction. After this, the drug molecule undergo what we call it as the phase 2 reaction. Okay, So drug molecules enter phase 1 followed by the phase 2 reaction usually. usually. Now let us talk about the phase 1 reaction. Okay? So phase 1 reaction is usually meant where a functional group is either added or deleted from a drug molecule. Remember the term functional group is either added or deleted from a drug molecule. Usually processes like oxidation, reduction, hydrolysis are the ones that usually come with the phase 1 reaction. An individual drug may undergo one of these reactions when it is passing through the phase 1 reaction. But mostly what is seen is oxidation reaction occurs with most of the drug molecules where either, where either oxygen molecule is added or hydrogen molecule is taken out from a drug molecule. Okay? Now to go across and think about just oxidation, we require enzymes to bring about this reaction. These enzymes is what we call it as monooxygenase uh, enzymes. These are usually present within the liver and they in turn depend upon a cytochrome P450 heme protein for the processes to occur. Now we have various variants of this cytochrome 450 present within the liver. Again, okay, we have monooxygenase enzymes which require cytochrome 450 heme protein and there are various variants of this cytochrome 450 hundreds of that because that's uh, again distributed in the nature within all the species so it's not very unique to human beings but when we talk about human beings maybe just a few of them maybe three or five are the ones which are really important to carry out this oxidation reaction now they are having some kind of subfamilies, sub subfamilies and then there is a division of that and there is a labeling also which depends upon how and in which category the cytochrome 450 fits into. Now the most important of that would be the cytochrome 450 A, uh, what is that, 3A4 that is what it looks like the enzyme name. The other enzymes now you can see onto the screen. Onto the, onto the screen and you can appreciate that there are so many enzymes with those labelings and which are now metabolizing so many drugs. But remember, remember one drug, if you take a single drug like this, a single drug like this, 
it can get metabolized by three or four cytochrome 450s so it's not very unique that it will undergo only just one pathway of no it can have two or three cytochrome 450s which can metabolize it at the same time at the same time one cytochrome 450 enzyme can metabolize several drugs so it is two way it's not something which is very very unique to um, a single drug or something of that so if this is happening the next thing is that these cytochrome 450 enzymes can get induced and can get inhibited by certain drug molecules by certain drug molecules and they also share some kind of drug interactions we will talk about enzyme induction and enzyme inhibition in the sessions to come i am not suppose i am not going to talk about them now but just remember that uh, it's 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 not very unique that only one single molecule one cytochrome 450 no it doesn't happen that way uh, all sh sharing is done between the drug molecules and the cytochrome 450 when metabolism is concerned now as i said there are some other uh, uh, phase one reactions hydrolysis reduction sometimes there is opening of the drug molecule closing of the drug molecules whatever this processes might be whatever this processes might be the main goal of phase one reaction is to transform this drug molecule now if you look at this drug molecule it's a globular shape to something like this now this can really get attached to something else and can be thrown out so this is inactive this is mostly inactive i should say and is in a position as in a position where it can get attached this 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 gap here this gap can get itself attached to some other molecule and can get excreted out of the body so this is the kind of transformation that you are looking at now remember now remember there is something more to phase 1 reactions especially the oxidation i need to just cover up before i end up phase 1 if this is a phase 1 and this is a drug molecule sometimes instead of forming this kind of a thing what is formed is this kind of a drug molecule okay this kind of a drug and if i touch it oh my god oh my god what is it i am getting hurt The reason is this is not a very good molecule. Loose ends. This is what we call it as a epoxide or superoxide. If it accumulates more than required, this can cause damage to the tissue because these are transient, highly reactive molecules. This is what we call it as a epoxide. Sometimes it happens, especially with drug toxicities. there is a lot of accumulation of this drug this this kind of a unstable molecule and in after the phase 1 this is a intermediate molecule again and which can cause a lot of problem to the individual so again this is a by product of phase 1 reaction so not always this kind of a molecule will reform it can form harmful molecules also like this that's the important thing that you need to know when you talk of the phase 1 reactions okay now coming to the phase 2 now coming to the phase 2 can you show them what's here okay i come to the i come to the phase 2 i come to the phase 2 reactions okay this is a phase 1 metabolite a perfect phase 1 metabolite this is a endogenous conjugate this is a endogenous conjugate it's kind of a jcb it's also yellow in color so i am happy it represents bile also uh, anyway so can you see there is a tip onto this which is used for kind of a attachment where it can lift it's a jcb crane actually so it lift weights and something of that sort this phase 1 metabolite can easily can easily join to this conjugate it can form a conjugation can fix it to this kind of substance and then this entire thing is heavy weight the molecular weight increases makes the substance more water soluble makes the substance more polar and then this entire drug molecule sorry for that drug molecule plus the phase 2 conjugation then can be taken out from the body so what is it 
phase two reactions are conjugation reactions are conjugation reactions wherein the phase one metabolites gets attached to the conjugate and then this can go out and get excreted out of the body okay so we have various phase two reactions we have glucuronic acid that acts as a phase two uh, substrate we also have certain other reactions like acetylation methylation uh, glucothion conjugation sulfate conjugation something to do with the nucleic acid and so on so these are all the processes which are phase two in nature now the screen on to the uh, your, your laptop will show you the kind of the phase two reactions with the drugs involved in the process now that was about the phase two reaction okay so we had the phase one where you add a sub or add or add or subtract the uh, a functional group then form the metabolites which then join to form the conjugates and get excreted out of the body out of the body now this was in general about the process involved in biotransformation but then there are certain factors that you need to also remember when you talk of biotransformation species to species variation okay what happens in rat may not happen in human cytochrome 450 enzymes other enzymes they differ okay so what happens with rat in drug with drugs given to rats may not happen with human so interspecies variation interracial variation we had the phase 2 acetylation you just saw it onto the screen okay so we have slow metabolizer we have the uh, what you call it as the fast metabolizer or fast acetylators and the slow acetylators genetic differences do cause variations in how drugs are metabolized especially with acetylation and the best example would be anti tuberculous drugs like inh but we'll come to that in when we talk of tuberculosis in a much more detail way extremes of ages extremes of ages so very small child okay a very small child maybe a infant okay it will require some time for this enzymes to develop okay so don't expect the child to metabolize drug in the same way as what occurs in a adult human being similarly extremes on the other side very old people okay might be there is deterioration of function and that's the reason that metabolism of drugs may take a longer time so these ages are more prone to toxicity with drugs because these people cannot just metabolize drugs in their body summarize on the topic need to add one more thing we just talked about phase 1 reactions also about phase 2 and so on we talked of the microsomal enzymes the cytochrome 450 and so on there's something else also that is called a non microsomal enzymes they do also take part in uh, drug metabolism and certain drugs undergo uh, metabolism through these pathways uh, that was my short analysis on uh, the possibilities the drug molecule will undergo uh, when it tra bio transforms something on the phase 1 mostly on oxidation cytochrome 450 then went up to phase 2 with conjugation and we had a nice play with the jcp and the craft work that i had i hope you like it um, do subscribe to my channel keep watching bye and have a nice weekend thank you